uh, we'll have our next presentation, which is uh, five months clear to narrow. Thank you. I was thinking about the fur and just taking that to my previous vote. Uh, thank you, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Daniel Toscano, attorney at law. My law office is located at 62B Commercial War Feast, Boston, Mass. 0211 uh, And I represent uh, Jerry Richfield, who's my immediate left. Jerry certainly needs no introduction. Jerry is a lifelong resident of the North Bend, a business owner in this neighborhood for many, many years. And we're here to uh, ask for your support for a new seven day all alcoholic uh, beverage license located at Five North Square, which is Gennaro's Restaurant. Gennaro's Restaurant is located at the corner of North Square in Little, what we call it, Little French Street. It's been a licensed establishment for approximately 30 years. It's been a restaurant uh, for, since, I think, 1980, 1981. Always maintained, uh, had a beer and wine license at that location. Recently, back in 2008, uh, Mr. Riccio had the opportunity to purchase the property along with the business. Um, made some renovations to the property. Um, upgraded the decor, upgraded its clientele has changed, and over the years what we've seen is the clientele from more of a family-oriented, um, uh, family-style Italian restaurant to more of a fine dining experience, a fine dining menu, um, and what we want to do is add this added service of an all-alcoholic license to our to our business. What we're doing is merely just upgrading from what we have from a full a beer and wine license which has a 1 o'clock closing hour, although uh, the hours operation did not go to 1 o'clock. But we would like the all-alcoholic license to provide an additional service to uh, the different type of clientele that we have, which is tur turned into more professional corporate clientele. To give you a little background of Mr. Riccio, Mr. Riccio owns a number of establishments in the neighborhood. All of them have done very well, um, have been a tremendous, a valuable asset to our community, such as uh, the Florentine Cafe, uh, the Cafe Victoria that's been around for many, many years, well before my time, and the cigar uh, establishment. <laughs> and uh, never a problem at this establishment runs a very well professional business. Um, the original maintains an office right on Amber Street. He manages his establishment. He's always attentive to the community needs and what's going on in his businesses. And it's uh, certainly a neighborhood folks who raises, raises his children in this neighborhood. And simply wanted an upgrade from the beer and wine license to the all alcohol license. What we have is a two-story restaurant. There's approximately 103 seats in the, the establishment, roughly 40 downstairs, uh, and 63 on the second level. And we've been in business for 30 years, but Jerry's owned this place for since 2008, and wants to continue to um, operate a professional business. Okay, are there any abutters here to the business? Would you like to speak first? Go right ahead. Uh, your name is uh, um, My name is Sandro Carella. Um, most of you probably don't know me. You, um, I identify myself as um, Maria the Dressmaker's son. My mother um, was across from Pal's Lunch for, for anybody who could remember in the 60s. Until she retired, uh, she worked at North Square where I live. Um, I posted to Nura a concern about uh, the license. First, I, sh I should preface this whole thing by saying I have nothing but the utmost respect for the Riccios, how they run their business, and I have no concerns whatsoever that they would maintain a respectable um, environment in, in what in in the restaurant as they have done so far um, my objection to the proposal as it was advertised was purely on the basis of extending possibly extending the closing time of the restaurant to include um, the services of a, a bar or tavern past midnight, 
that would be allowed to operate without any restaurant-related activity, serving food or whatever. I especially was concerned about it because um, there is no such establishment in North Square. North Square happens to be one of the areas in the North End where that's com almost completely sheltered from late night tavern bar activity. So my, my fear was completely focused on the, clo the closing times. The restaurant operates there, and I think it, it benefits from the atmosphere that North, North Square lends it, um, as does you know, the restaurants nearby. I think, though, that if a bar or tavern that were to operate past 11 o'clock or until 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., it would completely transform the atmosphere of, the, of what is now a, a haven, a, a, a really sheltered place. I too have had incidents, I'll, I'll use the, the term loosely, with people defiling my doorways um, from traffic, from you know the busier areas, so I'm particularly sensitive to that issue. And I'd like to cite as a case in point, we used to have these problems with the North End Feast before there was um, any control of alcohol or time. These problems were very elegantly solved by imposing a curfew, disallowing alcohol, Everybody gets done at a respectable hour, and I think we're, in, if anybody can remember the feasts, how they used to be, and, and how much uh, more reasonable they are now for, for the neighborhood, it, they work very well. So I believe in the curfew. I have no objection whatsoever that the restaurant should have uh, a full liquor license. I, they run a a great place and they deserve it and God bless them to have such a thing. My only objection, and I wanted to clarify this, is that there not be um, the possibility of a tavern or bar with a non-restaurant related purpose opening past the hours that the businesses in North Square currently respect. So I think that's a fair abbreviation of my position on the matter. I won't subject you to my entire letter, but you can read it on the website if you like. And with all due respect to the committee and to Jerry, that's, I, I just wanted to make that known. Thank you. The website, by the way, is northendwaterfront.com, not Newer's website. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate your, your concern. Um, just to assure you, currently, Mr. Riccio at that establishment has a uh, beer and wine license. It's a one o'clock closing hour um, on that license, so he can stay open until one. Chooses not to. The hour of operation that we're proposing is the same as what he has. Um, there is absolutely no intention whatsoever to make this a bar or tavern. Um, Jerry has done just quite the opposite as when he bought back. Uh, more than a few years ago, the Florentine Cafe, which in the 90s didn't change the est that establishment. And I don't know if, if you were around back then, which I believe you, you yes. may have been, remember the old Florentine, I remember it quite well. And I know what it looks like now and what it was before. And that was all because of this gentleman right here who put his hard earned money into that establishment and made it what it is today and really changed the face of how our establishment size we see him in the neighborhood. I think he was the first one to really open the place up, which I think is the Beautiful, beauty of what we see on Amp Street. There's absolutely no intention of turning this into a bar or a tavern. The type of clientele that goes into this establishment is not the type of people that are getting rowdy and drinking and hanging out. There is a bar little area um, to the left of the dining room. It has six seats. The intention is not to change that into a bar where people are going to drink all night long. The intention is when you have clients, uh, uh, customers that come in, especially professionals, individuals, couples, or whoever, 
some people like to have a drink before their dinner, sit down, have a drink afterward. It's, and they may not want to just sit at the table and do that. They may want to go in an area of a restaurant that they don't have to sit down at a table and have dinner. But it's definitely, the intention is absolutely not going to be a bar to have an atmosphere. And if you see the trend of the North Bend, anyway, it's going. We've gotten away from that trend, I think, in the neighborhood. And it's, this is a fine dining restaurant that has a bar in there. David, our agenda says that the um, it is generally operating up to 10.30. That's yeah. what we were told in the Is that correct? Yes, the closing I hours. Yeah, it closes, it closes early. Early. Yeah, it, and, and it's the same thing. There are many establishments that have full alcoholic licenses or beer and wine licenses that are 2 o'clock that just don't stay open that late. Um, for example, I think Marcimino's, and, and I'm not from that restaurant, but they, I believe they have a 2 o'clock um, license, and Marcimino's is never open. At Mama, the Mama Maria's has a fun all alcohol license. One, I don't know what they, one o'clock. The 1 o'clock. I don't think they stay open. I don't think the intention of Gary is to stay open so people can come and drink. One. And, Right, but it, he wants to maintain the clothing hour he has now on his existing license, um, but he also wants to upgrade that so he can provide the additional service to the to accommodate the type of clientele that he has today. Okay. Ralph, Ralph Farney, Battery Wharf. Um, I'm a little unclear as to the current license and then what, if anything, would change. Does the current license then uh, not have a limitation that alcohol has to be served uh, with a meal? I don't know if there's a, there may be a provision on it that alcohol has to be served with food. I mean, and, and it's something that the license board could put on any type of license. But it's something that the license board probably put on the majority of licenses across, the, or in, the na in the neighborhood or across Boston. But, I mean, it, it's very difficult, number one, to maintain. I think it's a lousy provision they put on it because some people want to have a drink before they sit down. Some people want to have a drink after. Some people after they sit down and have dinner and everything's clear they want to sit down for a half hour, 45 minutes and have a drink. And, and, it's, a, and it's a lousy provision. It, it really is. Uh, well, what about if somebody walks in at 10.30 and says, uh, I just want a drink? Are they going to be shown the door or are they going to be given a drink? I mean, if the business is open, I mean, so therefore, there is a professional it is a bar. It, it, it's, it's not. We're not promoting it as a bar. We're not promoting it as a bar. I mean, unfortunately, you guys missed the presentation by the captain and the sergeant that warned us, you know. Yeah, no, and I heard, and, and, and I heard the captain, and, and, uh, he was at a public safety meeting, and I, uh, and I was here maybe about a month ago, and I heard the entire presentation, and, and yet, there, in the North End, there is a concern. There, there are a lot of pouring alcohol licenses in this neighborhood. Oh, this is the heart of the, the city, the North End. People want to come here in the North End to dine. People, you know, heard of other parts of the neighborhood. They, people don't want to go to those other parts. But what I did hear from Sergeant Lehmer and, and the captain on the last time is the majority of the noise, which we're, we're used to, and I'm used to the same thing, I live on Prince Street, it's coming from the younger professionals, or whoever, I don't want to keep saying younger professionals, it's coming from the kids coming from the not station area, the Fango Hall area, coming in from the clubs after 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, we hear it all night. And, it's, and he's made it very clear at that meeting that it's not necessarily the people that are dining in our restaurants that are coming well, he said, out of What he also said, which you're leaving out if you heard it, which is that he said, what happens is when you have places that are permitted to both stay open late and to serve alcohol without the condition of it being part of a meal, he said those places will start out fine or work fine. He said, but then because they're limited, there'll be a, a huge magnet because if the other places close at 10.30 and so on and don't permit, he said they'll end up having this, you know, concentration and all hell will break loose. No, so he said, no, stop no. it now, don't let it go. So therefore, I'm expecting you to stipulate in a document to the community that this will not happen. But what I can tell you, the, the, if you're familiar with Gennaro, which you probably are, yeah. the, the areas where the six seats, the six seats at this bar area, it's mainly used for a service spot. It's not the type of establishment you're, you're getting 15, 20 people to so stick stipulate. in. So stipulate. That's something that uh, Mr. Riccio and I will, will discuss and we, we can discuss. Stipulate on the record, attached to the license. Well, I will discuss that. We'll discuss it. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you then.
Okay, questions right now, uh, Stephanie? Oh. I don't have a question. Okay. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, speaking of the uh, Prince Street, um, the, the bar is very small, but my understanding is, is that part of a zoning change that you had to make? Because I don't think there was a bar in that restaurant before 5 North moved in. It wasn't a zoning. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't trying to represent Mr. Jerry at the time when he initially purchased the establishment. From my understanding, the area was always there. You could just go and see it from the You just go and see it from the outside of my pad covered up. But but I don't think it's a zone change that needed to be made. If anything, if it wasn't included on the license, you had to add it, but it is considered first floor, so I don't know. Occupancy, yeah, first floor occupancy. Okay, Teresa, you have a question? Yes, I do, but it's, it's to Dave, not to Daniel. Dave, how many meetings have there been where the committees have gone against things and the city of Boston okayed it? How many incidents would you say there are that they, every meeting has voted against something, but the city passes it anyway? I would say when both neighborhood groups oppose something, yeah. the city usually also denies it. Really? The, the problem we have is that we can get different votes out of the two groups. So that, that's one of the factors. But I, I would say that as time has gone, gone on, more of our opinion has been reflected in the decisions of the board, especially the licensing board, not as much the Board of Appeal. Uh, so I think things are getting better. But yeah, there's plenty of instances where we voted against things and they've been approved. Okay, Can I make another yes, observation? Yes. Um, so the question about the bar and the hours, I think everyone is feeling a little bit uneasy because if, as Ralph pointed out, if other restaurants close at 11 or people are coming into the neighborhood from downtown and they say, oh, I just want to get a drink, and say you decide to stay open until 1, then that becomes the bar where people... Um, where the traffic leads to. So if you're, you could change your hours, I think a lot of people would feel a lot more comfortable with that. But a 1 a.m. license, um, I mean, that it could change over time. Right. Yeah, but I'm not looking to make it a bar because the way it's situated is I have three staircases. Mm -hmm. I, w I wouldn't want six to eight people in just a bar yeah. because that three staircases to go to the kitchen, to go to the dining rooms. Okay. I just want to use it with the food, with the restaurant. And I would, I would consider even during the week to close at uh, 12 to make the make the neighborhood good. I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just concerned yeah. like if I have someone come in at a late dinner, right. or somebody, and we don't want to be penalized for serving someone food and alcohol at 11 or 12, like right. during the week. But I'm not interested in having, as soon as my kitchen goes, I want the bar to go. Because I, 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 my, when that bar is just six people, I don't want people in, in there with one bartender and I have an empty restaurant of three floors where people can just float me to a whole building. David, can you quote our uh, quote? Well, I, I'll get into some of the information, but I, I had a question. Uh, first. How much does an all alcohol license from the city, and this is being obtained from the city, how much does it cost? I think the annual fee is roughly 3000 so there's really no cost per se. It's an annual, annual fee, fee of about $3,000. Thank you. Do you have a question, Tom? Yes, uh, maybe to the officers or even Mr. Toscano, if he was there that night. Am I wrong in remembering a night when a restaurant owner, a family, I think it was La Familia, voluntarily uh, limited their all liquor license to the regular closing hours. I think it was 10.30 or 11. And they voluntarily that night, and we voted on it. And I, maybe David remembers, but didn't that happen? Yeah, I remember that. Well, all right, let me, let me just say that the pass out some information, pass along some information. Uh, first of all, I believe that the current license, the beer and wine license, does have a restriction in it that says no bar. But there has been a very small, um, fairly quiet bar there now for a couple of years. But I believe in the current license it says 
says no matter. So if we support this application, we will not only be supporting an all alcohol license till 1 a.m., I believe we'll also be essentially sending a signal that we don't mind about that location and that the condition of no buy can be removed or actually not included in the new license. My second point is, it's a new license. Yes, they must give up their existing license. They will give it up to the city of Boston. They will obtain a new license if the license is void and signed. So uh, licenses don't cost money per se if you get it from the city. You pay a $3,000 annual fee. Um, it's the same information that I've had. And fair Y licenses are something less than that, maybe they're fifteen hundred or two thousand a year. However, all alcohol licenses are worth somewhere between a hundred thousand and four hundred thousand dollars. When they get transferred from one business to another, when they get sold from one business to another, all alcohol licenses go for one hundred to four hundred thousand dollars. The later the license, the more costly it is to purchase it, or the more value that it has. So this is a new license. We have not, at least in at least five years, maybe ten years, approved a new license with a closing hour of later than 11 o'clock during the week and 12 o'clock on the weekends. La Familia, we approved, we supported their change from beer and wine and cordials to all alcohol. That was a couple of years ago. But they they agreed to <coughs> 11 p.m. during the week and 12 o'clock in their application. I believe what they received was a 12 midnight seven days. But still, at least the owner agreed to go along with the new policy. And we have never supported a new license later than those hours. Um, Oh, and then just a few facts from our sheet here. There are presently, I'll say approximately because we may have lost one or gained one. There are 48 licenses in the North End that allow the pouring of alcohol to as late as 1 a.m. or later. 48 licenses. There are Well over 5,000 seats in the North End where alcohol can be poured until 1 a.m. or later. Uh, and a few of those licenses are actually owned by this uh, particular applicant. I think three, three all alcohol licenses to yeah. 1 a.m. So just some Thank you, David. Um, for or against, you can um, give your opinion on this. Stephanie, go um, we've had a lot of discussion about the details of this particular application, and I just want to say um, I, I'm glad that Ralph reminded us that Captain Lee uh, spoke here tonight and what he said. Uh, I think with regards to written agreements, there was a case in Beacon Hill a number of years ago where it was found that written neighborhood agreements don't mean anything in the law. Uh, and, and I think Captain Lee was really asking us to step back uh, and look at the forest and not the trees. You know, we're, we're discussing a lot of details about this particular application. But I think what Captain Lee was really asking us to do is to look at this from a neighborhood point of view. I understand very well why a, a, a business owner, a restaurant owner, uh, who's moving his business in a certain direction, uh, would, would want a full alcohol license rather than beer and wine. But is this really in the best interests of our community? I, I think we need to think about that as we vote on this application. Thank you, Stephanie. We need to move along here, but we have another uh, case after this one. So let's, um, someone uh, move, move to the uh, question. vote. Thank you. The white ballot number two, support a call out the home license to one o'clock, seven days, for folks. Okay, we have the tally. Eight support and 21 votes. So we will send the letter in opposition.
Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you uh, to be here. You'll hear me again. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's good.